Hi everyone and welcome back to my YouTube channel. I know it's been a hot minute since I've been on here, but I am back and I'm here to share some tips on how to take pictures of your client's nails. As you can see, <laughs> As you can see, we have a change of scenery. I'm on vacation. I'm saying vacation because the work does not stop, but the change of scenery is good for the soul. But because I'm on a farm, we have some zooming, buzzing co-stars today. So let's give them a thumbs up and get straight into the video. All right, so when we are taking pictures of our client's nails, we have a few checkpoints to look at. We have to look at the lighting. Am I using natural lighting? Am I using studio lighting? We need to look at the background. What needs to be there? What needs to go? Poses. What is our client doing with their hands? And accessories. Do our clients have anything on them that maybe matches the nail? So that could be a ring, um, a handbag, a scarf, whatever she has. Does it match with the nail? And can it potentially complement the image all right so our first checkpoint lighting very important i feel like every checkpoint is extremely important but lighting can definitely make or break an image any image you take i mean if you've ever watched a youtube video on how to take a selfie how to take the perfect picture i don't know lighting always comes up and nothing has changed when it comes to nails lighting is just as important all right, so studio lighting or natural lighting. When I say studio lighting, I'm not talking about big, expensive lights. I'm not asking you or expecting you to set up an entire studio just to take pictures of your client's nails. No, not at all. So when I talk about studio lighting, I am saying your desk lamp. I'm talking about your desk lamp. Whatever you use to do your client's nail with, nails with, nail with, nails, Whatever you're using to do your client's nails with, that will be the same light you use to take the pictures with. I have, however, found that when you use blue or cold lights, that it works out much better. We have our zooming co-star there. Hello. <laughs> when we use blue or cold lights, it tends to um, reflect or represent the color in the image more accurately. It does not change the overlay color as much as a warm or yellow light would. Natural lighting, that is just uh, taking your images outside or at a window. That is definitely my favorite and the one I prefer just because I feel like um, less can go wrong when using natural lighting. However, I must say that don't shoot in direct sunlight. Whenever you shoot in direct sunlight, I see a lot of very harsh highlights and very dark shadows. So you want to avoid the harsh highlights and dark shadows. We don't want that. All right, so let's look at the first how to, how not to. In this how not to, you can see that the light is focused at the back of the nails. So we want to promote our work right so of course we need to highlight the work then highlighting happens when we use light we can use light to highlight whatever is important so in this image at the moment the table is important to the photographer which is not the point of the image actually we want to highlight the nails so make sure that all the nails are well lit and also facing the camera so in this image i want to not only emphasize the pose but also the harsh shadows so let's talk about the pose at the moment her hands are very flat and you can't really properly see the nails so make sure that when you do um, take an image that the nails are facing towards the camera and not to the ceiling or wherever you just spent an hour on that set you want to show that off <laughs> all right but in this image i also want to point out that the light is actually focused on the back of the hand and because of that it's casting very harsh shadows at the front so you have your highlight coming from the back 
causing shadows at the front and we are looking from the, at the nails from the front so we're only seeing dark hands at the moment so if she just brought the light to the front it would have already been a much better image um, on the how-to side you can see that that is actually natural lighting no shadows and that's because it was taken in the shade in the shade but still with good lighting all over all around next we have our background when it comes to background i like to keep it simple as simple as possible once again you are promoting the nails the focus needs to be on the nails and not on the background whatever is happening in the background we don't really care it's just there for the aesthetic of it now when i say keep it simple it does not necessarily need to be a plain white paper it does not need to be one color um, I've seen people play around with shadows which I absolutely love and I've also seen people play around with textures which is also really beautiful um, so if your client has a nice jersey that you like and it complements the nails then you can use that as a background if you have a wall that is lit on the one side but has a shadow on the other side that can also create a very nice background or you can just have a plain background i usually just go for a plain background just because it's my aesthetic <laughs> all right so here on the how not to and how to images we can see that on the how not to the background is very busy at the moment we have the folds of the clothing the clothing has a pattern on it and I also feel like with the pink and the blue it's very bright very busy very in my face um, and when you just tone down everything it calms people down when you want your nails done when you go to a spa wherever you go you want to be I found that it's more successful when people feel calm so that's why I like the more simplistic look when taking my images poses very important to remember when you we talk about poses or when we look at poses it should be relaxed you should choose a few easy poses i know it's you don't want to take too long with the images when um after your overlay I know um, when I get really busy, I don't want to spend too much time taking pictures afterwards. So whatever is most comfortable for your client, whatever is most easiest for her, most easiest. English, save me now. <laughs> oh my goodness. But anyway, uh, whatever is easiest for her, um, let her do that and then just work around that, work according to that. And then also again you want the pose to showcase the nails and not the fingers not the palm not the arm okay so here we call this the octopus pose and that is because you know the eight fingers woo no this is a very big how not to you can have the most beautiful overlay I feel like this is also the go-to for clients, the octopus and the claw. A girl. They're like, no. <laughs> so the octopus, that's not a pose we, we, we like to use. We don't want to use that one. However, then I saw this and I was like, oh, but now I actually like the octopus. What's happening? But I think what is successful in this image and not in these images is the fact that the rings are very much taking up a lot of skin space. So I'm um, here I can see a lot of fingers. So to me when I look at that it's like fingers. Look at the fingers. But when I go to these images I'm like oh okay it's slightly more relaxed. So you don't have that or that it's slightly more relaxed and I feel like that's the the vibe of the overlay it's kind of crazy kind of groovy um, and I think the rings actually complemented really nicely but this is just I mean my mother would hate or hate this my brother does not like it at all so I think it's more my artsy side that's coming out that that likes 
this <laughs> all right here we have the claw which is also a very big go-to for most clients uh, whenever they, you ask them to send you a picture of their nails. That's why I don't ask my clients to send me pictures of their nails because I always get the claw. Who are you mad at? We want soft, elegant, subtle poses. It should look natural. No one walks around like this. But also no one walks around like this. But you can sit like this. I don't know. With these next three poses, I want to talk about angles. So as I've mentioned before, when we spoke about lighting, those hands um, at the right corner, top right corner, they're too flat. They're not properly showing off the nails. Um, so what I would have done is, instead of having a flat pose, just moving up the nails or slightly bending the fingers, maybe let them hang, dangle a little, blah, blah, blah. Just whatever is comfortable for the client. Um, just to show off her nails better with the bottom right corner oh we have a birdie co-star please go away fine I'll wait we'll, we'll wait for Sakurabaki to finish eating okay so as I was saying <laughs> um, with the bottom right uh, image the image was taken from the top but the nails are curled towards the floor so once again you're not properly showing off the nails so just be conscious of are you properly showing off the nails but then in the ombre set the angle is fine i like the angle but it's also again a kind of octopus look and then also i don't know but this is a background thing again I think that's a background issue of what do you include in the background, what do you not include in the background. Keeping it simple, not adding too much, and so on and so forth. Okay, so here are a few how-to poses. I absolutely love these images. Why? Because their sole focus is on the nails. I absolutely love, 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 love those extremely close-up pictures of nails i know you can't necessarily do that with your phone camera i have tried and i have failed oh my goodness so what i've tried in the past is when ah please i have so many co-stars today it's great it's great we love it we love all god's creatures okay um so oh what am i doing Alright, so with the, is it turtle print, leopard print, whatever print that is, you can see that the hand is tilted slightly forward. What this does, it, it causes the camera to zoom in and focus on the nails in front and not on the palm necessarily. So if I had to, let me just show you like this. So if I had to pose like this, you see a lot of palm, a lot of hand, flick. A lot of palm, a lot of hand, but when I tilt it forward, much more nails, you know? So, just, it looks, it kind of looks like a T-Rex arm sometimes, but it's fine. Nobody cares about that. We still love the image. So, extremely close-up shots of the nails always works out perfectly. What, what bird is that now? Is it even a bird? Can you even hear it? I'm sure you guys can't even hear it. I'm just creating a fuss over nothing. <laughs> so very close up shots. Love that. And um, hmm. yeah, I think very close, close up shots are very nice. And then also, as you can see in this one image with the blue nails, not all the nails are included in the image. So that's that also... Um, is important to remember when trying to incorporate all the nails. You don't have to incorporate every single nail. If you've done an overlay and every nail looks exactly the same, then try something new. Just take a picture of the thumb or just the four fingers. You don't need all five fingers. All right, so your final checkpoint will be your accessories. Very important to remember with accessories, it has to complement the nails. So whether you're using 
a wallet, a handbag, rings, whatever the client has, a scarf, it has to complement the nails. And do not hide behind your accessories. Your accessories are there to complement the nails. They're not there to overthrow the nails. You could argue that with that one octopus pose that the accessories actually overthrew the nails. Like the first thing I saw when I looked at that image was rings and I was like, wow, that's amazing. I love those rings. Kind of weird, but they're cool. But yeah, so you don't want your accessories to overpower the work you've done. Okay, again, focus on the nails, not on the accessories, not on the background. Wah, bah, 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 bah. Accessories can also count for products. If you're going to use products, make sure that they are clean and that they are full. Please, ladies, clean, full products. Here I have some gorgeous 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 i have no idea i made this presentation a while back and i don't know why i did not add her instagram handle but i absolutely love this so she matches her nails with whatever she's wearing or she gets inspired by her shirts and i absolutely love that and i think it complements the images so well so if you have a client that does that there you go, accessories, beautiful. Next we have cups, teacups, bottles. Again, people tend to grab it and not have pretty relaxed poses with that. The sun's moving now, so it's in my face. I'm sorry, I'm just gonna turn you guys. Turn, and then I'm gonna turn myself. Oh no, that, oh wow, that did not work. I'm just going to do that, and that, and that. Better, no, okay. I'll just sit like this. Don't move. <laughs> okay, back to accessories. When people are holding bottles or cups, they tend to grab it, like they're holding onto it for dear life. Relax, darling. We're elegant. We're at a high tea. So act like it. <laughs> All right, so whenever your client is holding onto an object or you want an object in the image that complements your nails, make sure that the pose stays relaxed. Okay, here's a very good example of grasping a bottle and then how it would look like if you just relax the nails. Use a teacup instead. I like the fact that they used a plain teacup, but the teacup still or the mug it's a mug it's not a teacup i'm sorry Ugh, don't come for me anyway <laughs> i like the fact that the mug is plain but it still has some kind of texture to it so it makes it a little bit more interesting here is a very good example of how not to hide your nails behind your objects so or behind the accessories you use so i absolutely love the nails i think the orchid is it an orchid or orchidea my english is letting me down today <laughs> um i love the fact that she put those two together but now the orchid is covering the nails i'm like no i want to see the nails but then again you can argue that i said don't you don't have to show all the nails but I think if you don't show all the nails, rather use the thumb because this just looks like an accident, you know? Can I say that? It does. All right, next, when we use products, make sure that your product is full. We want to think, we want our clients to think that we have an abundance of everything. We never run out of anything, anything ever. Right, so make sure that your almond oil is full. Make sure that your vitamin dose is full. It is okay to have a bubble. Of course, it's going to have um, a light bubble in it. All products do. But if it's that empty, it's a bit much, don't you think? And then also very important, this is nothing to do with um, accessories. But very important to also remember when taking your images is to not have cuticle oil still on the nails. It it's not a look. I don't really know what to say about this. It's just... No one's that oily. It, it, you want everything to look 
natural, healthy, and being oily is not healthy. <laughs> well, it doesn't look good, okay? So we want healthy, natural cuticles, not oily cuticles, okay? Like, just like we don't want oily skin on our faces, we don't want oily hands, okay? Editing, okay. So I'm going to make a video while editing a set and then I'll talk you guys through how exactly I edit my images, what I use and how to not go overboard with it. When we're editing our images, it's very important to make slight adjustments. We're not changing the skin tone. We're not changing the entire image. We're not doing anything weird. We're making slight adjustments. So I'm talking about the brightness, the highlight, the shadows, very small things, okay? So I'm going to edit this image. I'm busy recording my screen, so the video should be up here. Um, all right, so first I'm going to go to adjustments. I'm just going to adjust the brightness. For my own aesthetic, I would like very bright images. I'd like it to be clear, but other people like the darker aesthetic. So whatever your aesthetic is, go according to that. However, don't go overboard and bleach out everything or darken everything too much. So I'm just slightly, slightly going to adjust the brightness. And then I also feel like the shadows are too harsh. So I'm definitely going to make that lighter. But can you see how, can you see what a big difference it already makes to the skin? How much softer she looks just by adjusting the shadows and the brightness. And then I also like to adjust the highlight, make that a little softer. So that's usually all I have to do for the skin to be nice and soft the way I like it. But you still want some kind of texture to the skin, okay? You don't want to airbrush all her wrinkles away, okay? People have wrinkles, hands have wrinkles, that's fine. Okay, so now I'm just cropping out that extra part of hand that I don't really need. So I think this is good. Yes. And then I bought, CoStar, I bought um, the, I, I guess it's the gold package or whatever from PixArt. So I can use all the fun, um, the functions but you don't have to I think the image is good as it is right now but I have a tool that removes wrinkles how fun is that oh I love it so then whenever I have some very harsh wrinkles I will just go in and manually remove some of them make them a little lighter We're not shaming people on their wrinkles. I have so many wrinkles on my hands. See? But it's fine. But we don't always want them in our pictures, you know? <laughs> and then the smoothening tool. This is where the airbrushing kind of comes in. Please, please do not go overboard with this. So I'm going to press manual. I'm going to make the opacity 40. Right? 40. Why? Because I don't want it to be too harsh. I'm just adding some softness to her hand. I'm not trying to remove everything. Okay. So very roughly just adding some softness. Look at that. <gasps> Cheating, Nadia. Cheating. But it's beautiful, so we love it. <laughs> okay, also very important when it comes to editing, no filters. Please do not put filters on your images. Why? Because clients like to pull their inspiration from Instagram, from Facebook, or whatever social media they use. Um, now you come, okay, let's put a filter on this and then I can actually show you. Um, 
Okay, let's say you put that ridiculous filter on it, which no one will probably, hopefully. Actually, that one looks nice and it didn't change the color that much. No, no filters. Nothing. Okay. Anyway, so you add a filter. It changes the color slightly. Client comes in. Please, can I have this color? And you take out the color. Yeah, sure, that's fine. Take out the color. You start painting and she's like, I don't like this. This is not the color on the picture. It's because of your filter. Please don't put filters on your images. Okay. So we adjust the shadows, the highlights, the brightness, if you want to. Um, I wouldn't uh, change the contrast. That is usually when you tend to get those like super bright highlights or the very strong shadows. So just stay away from the contrast. You can change your brightness slightly your highlights, your shadows, and then some smoothness. You can add some smooth to your client. Okay, next, save, and then it's ready to post. Okay, now I don't add watermarks to my work, but if you want to, very important to not go overboard with your watermarks the reason for this is if you go overboard you are less likely to get reposted so if you add a watermark let's say at the nail art studio ooh, yes oh. um that font nasty you are going to choose you type out or Whatever you have, if you have a little logo, you can put that on. Choose a simple font. Very, very simple. And then you also want to make it small. Make it make it a little baby. And then place it close to the nails or wherever. So that it can't get cropped out. I've seen some people crop out watermarks. Very rude. Eh? Very rude. But then I still feel like it's too white, so I'm going to click on it again. And then I'm going to change the opacity. Remember, it's a watermark. It's not another image on top of the image. So changing the opacity is definitely a must. And I think I'm going to do 40 with this one. See, and you can barely see it. Wow, how amazing is that? That is so cute. I don't use watermarks, but if you want to, keep it simple keep it subtle it shouldn't be in your face you don't of course you want people to know it's your work but um i think watermarks are more for people not stealing your work so it should be a very subtle thing that's kind of hidden in your image i had to move you guys again now the sun is catching up to me i just Move my mic so that you guys can hear me. Okay. Last one, I promise, last section. <laughs> okay, so for the last section, I am just going to talk through Instagram layouts. Um, so I'm sure you guys have gone onto Instagram, seen the most beautiful layout, and you're just like, I want to follow them. And that is definitely what an aesthetic does. For your following I think most of my following was um, built on the fact that I had a quite nice aesthetic going on for a while a while back like a few weeks ago I kind of went crazy on the layout like that something didn't work out there <laughs> but I'm getting back on track now anyway most important thing when um, looking at your Instagram layout is to establish a kind of aesthetic so do you want a light aesthetic do you want a dark aesthetic do you want something busy something colorful um, I'll show you in the examples now um, second it's very important to have a set or two or three set poses you don't need um, to have different poses every single time. I think having two or three set poses can definitely um, add to creating some kind of unity in your layout and then also create an appealing layout. So here I have an example of an amazing nail artist I follow on Instagram. This is not really my thing but it works for her and it definitely 
it's something that I can identify her by. So whenever she posts an image, I immediately know, oh, okay, it's her work, you know? Um, just because she likes to, she has kind of the same poses every time. And she also does the hand thing where she kind of matches the fingers with the nails she did. So if the nails have pigment on them, then she will rub some pigment on the fingers. Not my vibe. But it works for her it's definitely something that makes her stand out and that's unique to her so love that next i have a very busy colorful um layout but it still works because the rainbow kind of look goes throughout here with the handbag you can even see that she did a simple set on her client it's just a nude with some glitter glitter dots silver or gold dots I don't know but then the handbag is an accessory she brings in to complement her layout so I guess the the accessory does not necessarily need to complement the nails but it can complement your um, layout at the end of the day so usually people post all the blue nails together and then the pink nails together so even though they did the pink nails today they won't post it today they won't store it wait a while and then if they have enough blue nails they post all the blue nails together that also works really well with this layout she is not really focused on um the color of the nails the what's happening with the nails she does not care about that she just has one background and that is creating unity in her work and it's not a uh, it's a it's a color background which also makes it a little bit more striking than it would be um, if it was just a plain white or gray background this layout oh my goodness this is what I strive to be wow this is so beautiful it's so simplistic not every post has nails in them so she does a flower post a floral post or um just an image and then she'll do a tip or a tutorial and then some nails nails again and then a tutorial and then tips again love 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 it so you don't always need to post nails necessarily or your client's hands you can do product posts alone you can do um just a little inspirational quote if you wanted to or if you liked a picture on Pinterest, you can post that as well. So you have options. All right. And then here I have a checklist for you guys. You can just take a screenshot of that. And then just with your first few images, you can go practice if you want to. Or if you take your next client picture, you can just have this checklist next to you. Make sure that you tick every box light is focused on the nails reflection lines are straight i did not talk about that but reflection lines should be straight and that is not an image problem that is an upper arch correcting problem if your um lines ref reflection lines aren't straight you did not do your upper arch correcting properly so that is that is a video for another day <laughs> okay my background does not take away from the nails my pose is relaxed. You don't want to relax, darling. We're sensitive. We're elegant. We're good. Okay. Camera is focused on the nails and not the fingers. Um, that is more. Um, that is more a point of where's my focus. So the nails aren't blurred. You know. Okay. Accessories complement the nails, no cuticle oil, hand cream, vitamin dose around the cuticles. That is all from me today. The sun is burning the side of my face right now. So I'm going to get out of here, maybe take a nap. I really hope you guys enjoyed that video today and that you learned something new. And I hope you guys use it. Tag me in the pictures if you do use it. I would love to see... Um, 
what you guys did with the tips and then also if you have any questions please let me know you can dm me at the nail art studio i'm not on facebook anymore so please remember that you can also leave a comment down below so yeah don't forget to give this video a thumbs up i mean give our co-hosts at least give our co-hosts the sakerbaki the flies what is the sakerbaki in english even i don't even know wow english don't fail me now anyway so give our co-host today a thumbs up i am going to go enjoy the rest of my vacation bye guys <laughs>